marami nagsasabi guys na effective daw ito because just after a few days of using these products is nagpipeel off na raw yung skin nila. And for them, this is a sign na gumagana daw to. Hmm. Hi everyone! Kamusta kayo? My name is John Angelo. Welcome to my channel and mag-uusap na naman tayo about skincare, skincare, and skincare. So, make sure to keep watching. So, ang topic natin for today guys is by far the most requested topic sa channel ko guys as in. Ang pag-uusapan natin for today is the truth about rejuvenating sets. Kung effective ba sila, ano ba ang dapat natin malaman sa mga rejuvenating sets, and the golden question, dapat ba natin silang gamitin? So, maraming marami pa tayong pag-uusapan in this video guys. So, let us begin. So by now guys, sure na sure na ako na alam nyo na kung ano ba ang isang rejuvenating set. It's a set of usually four skincare products that includes a rejuvenating soap, a rejuvenating toner, and two rejuvenating creams, yung isa pang umaga and yung isa pang gabi. And yung mga rejuvenating set na to guys, usually ang mga claim nila is to give you glowing skin, to give you Korean skin, to give you glass skin in just a matter of sometimes 30 days, sometimes just a few weeks, and sometimes just as short as 7 days. So, hihimayin natin guys ang isang rejuvenating set and iisa-isahin natin ang mga products to see if these kinds of products are good or not for our skin. And then at the end, we shall make an informed decision kung okay ba talaga sila gamitin sa skin natin or hindi. Hi guys! Just an additional reminder na ang pag-uusapan lang natin ng mga rejuvenating sets for this video are those that are FDA approved. Guys, sobrang hindi ko marerecommend na gumamit kayo ng mga rejuvenating sets na hindi pa FDA approved because sobrang delikado siya. Pwedeng may mga traces yan of lead or mercury or other harmful ingredients na hindi naman natin dapat pinapahid sa skin natin in the first place. So yun yung importance ng FDA testing to see if there are chemicals like this in skincare products na hindi naman nakadeclare. And also, if you want to check kung yung rejuvenating set ninyo is FDA approved or not, usually yung FDA is nagre-release sila ng mga lists of yung mga rejuvenating sets na hindi pa FDA approved na may mga warnings sila. Punta lang kayo sa fda.gov.ph and then i-check nyo sa search bar. I-type nyo lang doon yung pangalan ng rejuvenating set and then makikita nyo doon sa uh, mga results kung isa ba sila sa mga nilagyan ng warning ng FDA. So yun lang guys, be safe always. So simula natin guys with the rejuvenating soap. So, ang mga rejuvenating soaps, guys, as you notice by the name, isa siyang bar soap and it's usually color orange. Similar to those na nakikita nyo sa market na kojic soap or kojic acid soap. And that is because usually ang mga rejuvenating soap are actually kojic acid soaps by themselves. Now, ang kojic acid, guys, ito yung main ingredient ng mga kojic soaps. Yes, actually, it has been known to be very, very effective sa skin natin, guys. In fact, it's one of the oldest and most popular skin lightening treatments out there, itong kojic acid. So, there's actually a lot of research backing up kojic acid. However, guys, yung mga studies na pinapakita na effective yung kojic acid as an ingredient, ang ginagamit nilang kojic acid product is a kojic acid cream and not actually a kojic acid soap. And very important na malaman natin to guys kasi may difference ang soap na kojic acid sa kojic acid na cream. Yung soap, ilang seconds mo lang siya iniiwan sa skin mo versus a cream where you might leave it on for the entire day. At dahil mas mahaba yung contact time sa skin natin ng kojic acid, it might mean na kailangan mo siyang iiwan sa skin mo para maging effective siya. Now, while based on anecdotal evidence or meaning yung mga kwento-kwento ng mga nakapaggamit na ng kojic acid soaps, maraming nagsasabi na effective daw to sa skin nila, nakakaputi daw talaga. However, guys, kapag nag-research kayo on the side ng mga dermas kung anong opinions nila sa kojic acid soap, hati-hati yung mga opinions nila about it. Merong mga ibang dermas, guys, na ina-acknowledge nila yung presence ng 
kojic acid soap and sinasabi daw nila that this might be effective for lightening dark spots. However guys, merong isa pang side ng dermas na hindi masyadong nag-aagree dito because sinasabi nila na yung kojic acid kailangan matagal yung contact time sa skin natin. Therefore, mas effective daw if gamitin mo talaga is cream. Yung argument kasi ng ibang mga dermas guys is yung kojic acid soap, pag nilagay mo na siya sa skin mo, even before mag-work siya sa skin mo guys is nabanlaw mo na siya. Again, because sabon siya. But given that, guys, meron namang mga ingredients in skincare na pwede mo silang gamitin in soap form and they have been found to be effective sa skin natin. Ang example for this is salicylic acid or BHA and benzoyl peroxide, which are both used in mga wash-off forms to gently treat acne. So okay guys, imagine natin na gumagana nga yung kojic acid in that way, na gumagana siya in soap form. Pero, take note, lahat ng mga nakagamit na ng kojic acid soap, isipin nyo guys yung pinaka-common na sinasabi nila. Ang pinaka-common na feedback when it comes to kojic acid soap is sobrang drying siya sa skin. So imagine nyo guys, iiwan nyo yung drying soap na yon sa face ninyo for a bit more than a minute para lang mas makita nyo na umefect siya sa skin ninyo. Additionally, yung iba, sinasabi pa nila is gamitin mo daw to everyday. So, kung gawin natin to, ano kaya ang mangyayari sa skin natin? More or less, probably guys, mag-over dry siya. And that is something that you do not want to do to your skin, guys. Because kapag na-over dry ang skin natin, pwedeng ma-disrupt ang natural skin barrier natin. And kapag nangyari yun, guys, isa na namang malaking problema yun. Because a disrupted skin barrier can lead to higher chances of irritation and irritation can lead to acne. So again, isipin natin, ano kaya ang mas okay na gamitin? Ang kojic acid na soap na medyo half-half ang mga opinions ng dermas? Or would you rather use a kojic acid cream in which ito na yung klarong-klaro na sa studies is pinapakita na effective siya in cream form? So kayo na ang bahala sumagot dun sa question na yon pero sa akin guys, mas pipiliin ko yung mas okay para sa skin barrier ko. Pero kung yung rejuvenating soap nyo guys is actually not a kojic acid soap, a good general rule when it comes to cleansers is to check. Kapag ginamit nyo siya, sobrang nagta-tight ba yung skin ninyo? Sobra ba siyang nagsisqueaky clean or nagda-dry out ba yung skin ninyo? Dahil kung oo, baka hindi yun yung best cleanser for you. Pag gumamit kayo ng mga sabon or yung mga wash-off formula na naiiwan yung skin nyo na sobrang dry, that is usually not a good sign na okay siyang cleanser and you might want to reconsider. Next, we are moving on to rejuvenating toners. Now, okay, yung mga rejuvenating toners, guys, na notice ko na iba't ibang klase ang mga rejuvenating toner sa market. Meron yung isa, yung para siyang maxipil, kung saan yung main ingredients niya are tretinoin and hydroquinone. Pero meron din namang ibang mga rejuvenating toners na hindi ito yung main ingredients. Now, for those rejuvenating toners na ang main ingredient nila is tretinoin and hydroquinone or yung mga gaya ng maxipil or RDL baby face, mahaba ang explanation dyan, guys. In fact, I have a whole other video on treatments such as maxipil and RDL baby face. You can check it out here. I will link it. Pero basically, ang point ko sa video na yun, guys, is pwede, pwedeng gumagawa na ang maxi peel or RDL baby face for you pero kapag hindi mo siya nagamit under the guidance of a dermatologist or kapag nagamit niyo sila ng mali mabibigat ang mga side effects including pag-iitim ng balat and mahirap yon i-treat. So, i-check nyo yung ingredients, guys. Check nyo kung yung main ingredients ba ng rejuvenating toner nyo is tretinoin and hydroquinone. And if it is, see if worth it ba yung benefits na makukuha ninyo sa mga side effects niya. Now, yung mga ibang toners naman, guys, na hindi naman siya parang maxipil, para naman siyang eskinol. So, yung mga toners na to, meron siyang alcohol, yes, meron siyang salicylic acid, Yes, meron siyang niacinamide which is good for your skin, but sometimes meron din silang fragrance which is not so good for your skin. So yung alcohol guys, technically it's not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to skin care. Basically, ang ginagawa ng alcohol guys is para mas mabilis maabsorb ng skin mo yung mga beneficial ingredients ng isang product. Now, ang problema sa mga alcohol-based toners na to guys is number 1 usually meron silang fragrance. So, kung meron ding fragrance yung product na yon, not only mabilis yung pag-absorb ng mga salicylic acid or glycolic acid sa skin mo, 
pero yung fragrance din, mabilis siya papasok sa skin mo. And kapag nagkaroon ka ng allergy or ng irritation from that fragrance ingredient, then lalala pa lalo yung irritation na makukuha mo. And number two, very old school formulation na to guys. Yung lalagyan mo ng alcohol, tapos lalagyan mo ng glycolic acid or salicylic acid para mas mabilis yung absorb sa skin. Marami ng mga formulations ngayon wherein salicylic acid or glycolic acid is used in a very, very gentle, alcohol-free formula that has lower chances na ma-irritate yung skin natin. At sa totoo lang guys, hindi kailangan ng alcohol para sa lahat ng mga beneficial ingredients ng skin. Kasi guys, may mga ibang ingredients naman sa skincare na kahit nasa surface or kahit nasa ibabaw lang sila ng skin nyo guys, they are already doing their job. It's already working. So kaya usually guys, yung mga rejuvenating toners are actually very drying for our skin. Number one, because alcohol-based na sila. And yung mga alcohols, guys, alam nyo naman, mabilis yan makadry ng skin. Second, sasamahan mo pa ng salicylic acid, which yes, it's a very beneficial ingredient for oily skin. Pero guys, drying din siya. So kapag i-combine mo tong dalawa na to sa isang toner na sinasabi nila na gamitin mo raw siya every day, ano kaya ang mangyayari sa skin natin? Pwede ulit siyang ma-overdry. But again, some of these alcohol-based toners, especially for those na walang fragrance, let's say, meron nga siyang alcohol, meron siyang salicylic acid, pero wala naman siyang fragrance or other harmful ingredients. Yes, they might work kahit na medyo mas mataas yung risk, pero if ever gumana man sila, I would definitely not recommend using them every day. Kasi guys, pati nga yung mga newer generations na na mga exfoliating acids na sobrang gentle na nila sa skin natin, ang recommended lang na paggamit sa kanya is around 2 to 3 times a week. Ganun lang ka konti. So what more if yung alcohol-based in every day mo. So, make sure to check the ingredients list of your rejuvenating toner, guys. Kung may alcohol, kung may fragrance, kung may irritating plant extracts, ligwak na yan. Pero, kung alcohol and salicylic acid ang meron niya, pero wala naman yung mga irritating plant extracts or wala naman yung fragrance, then see if it works for your skin. Pero, wag nyong gagamitin every day. Usually, mga 2 to 3 times a week nyo lang siya gamitin and that might work for you. Now, third, guys, we have yung mga rejuvenating creams. Naunahin natin yung mga AM cream, guys. And to be honest, medyo hati ako sa mga AM creams ng rejuvenating sets. Now, aside from the problem na yung mga iba meron silang mga fragrance sa kanila, ang mas malaking problema ko dito, guys, is yung SPF rating ng mga AM creams. Na kung hindi nyo alam, guys, yung standard ng sun protection sa skin natin or yung mga dapat nakikita mo na specification ng mga sunscreen is... SPF 30 broad spectrum or may mga PA++++. The reason for this is because yung SPF guys, SPF 30 will protect us from yung UVB rays or yung mga rays na nagkukos ng sunburn sa skin natin. Now, kailangan din broad spectrum siya guys because we also need protection from UVA rays. So, dito pumapasok yung mga PA rating, yung mga PA++++. Na importante din guys na protected tayo from UVA rays because ito yung mga rays na nagkukos ng mga wrinkles, ng mga aging sa skin natin. And not only that, ito din yung rays na nagda-darken ng mga dark spots sa skin natin. Kunyari may gumagaling tayo na acne, ba guys? Pag natapat nyo yan sa araw ng walang sun protection, mas tataas ang chances na magkaroon tayo ng dark spots or brown spots na darker pa sa skin natin. Now, another very important reason kung bakit dapat SPF 30 broad spectrum yung minimum na nasa mga sunscreens natin is because yung mga ingredients guys na nasa rejuvenating soap, yung kojic acid, and also yung mga rejuvenating toner na salicylic acid or glycolic acid, they make us more sensitive to the sun. So, actually, sun protection is very, very important, lalong-lalo na kung may mga active ingredients gagaya ng mga acids na to sa skincare routine mo. And yung iba guys, minsan, wala pa silang broad spectrum protection, meaning walang PA rating or walang PA++++ or wala talaga nakasabi na broad spectrum. Pero to be fair guys, hindi ko naman nila lahat ang mga rejuvenating creams. Yung iba naman, meron silang SPF 30 and meron din silang broad spectrum protection. So, kudos to those brands na gumagamit ng 
SPF 30, and broad spectrum protection minimum. Kasi yun talaga yung pinakakailangan ng skin natin, guys. Lalo na kung gumagamit tayo ng active ingredients. Now, last but definitely not the least, guys, we have PM creams. Or basically, yung mga creams na ginagamit mo kapag gabi na. Now, ito na siguro, guys, yung pinaka-least na parang kinakatakutan ko sa rejuvenating set because usually, guys, moisturizer lang siya na may mga beneficial ingredients such as niacinamide, kojic acid. Sometimes, meron din siyang mga alpha-arbutin. Siguro, nagkakatalo na lang siya, guys, sa kung meron ba siyang fragrance or wala. Again, if yung fragrance is medyo high up on the ingredients list, then I would be careful with that kasi baka mas mataas ang chance na ma-irritate yung skin ninyo. Pero kung medyo nasa hulihan naman yung fragrance, guys, then I leave it up to you to make a decision kung gusto niya ba i-risk yung 1% chance na magkaroon kayo ng irritation or you would rather be safe than sorry. And for those brands na meron silang rejuvenating set na fragrance-free, ang masasabi ko is good job. Keep up the good work. So given this information, guys, ano nga ba ang masasabi natin sa rejuve? Okay nga ba siya or effective ba siya sa skin natin? Well, marami nagsasabi, guys, na effective daw ito because just after a few days of using these products is nagpe-peel off na raw yung skin nila. And for them, this is a sign na gumagana daw to. Hmm, hindi siya necessarily sign na ume-effect siya ng mabuti or gumagana siya. Kasi kung i-analyze natin ng mabuti yung mga products ng rejuvenating set, guys, imagine mo, merong rejuvenating soap na ginagamit mo everyday na very drying sa skin mo and then lalagin mo pa ng rejuvenating toner na alcohol-based, again, very drying, tapos meron pa siyang mga exfoliating acids that can also be drying to your skin. Tapos yung gagamitin mo pang sun protection sa umaga is pwedeng less than SPF 30 siya or minsan walang broad spectrum protection. And notice nyo guys, yung ibang mga rejuvenating cream, maliliit lang yung lalagyan. So, minsan, hindi pa enough yung moisturizer na ilalagay mo sa mukha mo. Tapos, uulit-ulitin mo yun araw-araw. Most likely guys, kung sino man ang gumawa ng ganung routine, magbabalat talaga at magbabalat ang skin nila because sobrang drying yung routine na to by nature. Ang paggamit ng skincare products ngayon guys, dapat very very gentle ka sa skin mo. Dapat iniingatan mo yung skin mo. Kunyari merong parang namumula or parang na-irritate or dry patches sa skin natin, usually guys, it's taken as a sign na kailangan mo pang mas ingatan ang skin mo and because we do not want, again, to disrupt our skin barrier. And as much as possible, ayaw talaga nating ma-irritate ang skin natin. Pero kung itatanong nyo sa akin ang very simple question na, okay ba ang rejuvenating sets or hindi, ang masasabi ko guys is, hindi natin sila pwedeng lahat-lahatin dahil iba't iba ang mga ingredients list ng mga rejuvenating sets. So hindi natin masasabi na as a whole kung okay ba sila or hindi. It will always depend kung ano ang ingredients list nila. So all in all guys, that is my take on rejuvenating sets. Now I want to know, ano ang opinion ninyo when it comes to rejuvenating sets? And ano kaya ang mga naging experiences ninyo? I want to know guys, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you found this video informative, please do leave me a thumbs up and also subscribe kung gusto nyo pa ng mga videos gaya nito. And as always guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye!